Today, I would like to talk to you about the interplay between technology and compliance jobs as a continuation from our last podcast, which you can find in the link below. Let's start by taking a step back and speaking about how compliance functions have evolved over the past 10 to 15 years and what they may look like going forward. Let's first of all speak directly and underline the fact that compliance functions within banks and other financial institutions usually change because of fines or threats of fines. We all wish that the leaders of these institutions would work based on the need to do the right thing, but unfortunately, the stick is usually a more effective method than the carrot. So how big can, compli can compliance fines be? According to data from the Corlytics database, the total enforcement amount stood at $19 billion for 2024, reflecting the growing attention regulators are, pay are paying to financial crime compliance failures and governance breaches across the globe. But these fines are not something new. They have been around for at least the last 15 years and have led to large changes in the way that banks operate. So here's a typical playbook. A bank gets fined by the regulator, let's say for a money laundering violation. It pays the fine and then undertakes to implement a so-called remediation plan. That means that the bank would have to demonstrate that it understands the mistake that it made, takes ownership and makes significant changes to improve the compliance program. In the past, that almost invariably meant hiring more people as a starting point. And that's because it was the quickest and easiest solution in the absence of useful technology. It was also a powerful way to tell the regulator that we started with X number of people in compliance and we now have three X people in the function, so we're doing well. Whether or not the compliance department was in fact three times more effective than before was an open point of discussion. So banks went out into their own organizations and into the broader market and found people who became compliance professionals. As an example, one European investment bank that got into trouble in 2014 increases compliance program and it's the number of people in compliance from 2000 to around 7000, just as an example. There are reports showing that in the European Union, there will be an additional 70,000 compliance professionals coming online over the next few years. So it's clear that the need for people has not ended. So what about technology, you may ask? Surely the banks must have done better given the use of tech solutions in compliance. Well, speaking from my experience over the last 20 years in the field, I would say that pre-AI, the massive technology spend on compliance has yielded limited results because the regulatory burden and the regulatory costs were in fact very high, probably much higher than what the banks anticipated. So because it was such a high burden for the banks to overcome, the results were not at the level that they should have been. Banks spent heavily on tools such as transaction monitoring and alert systems that generated a massive amount of alerts. These are when transactions involve names of customers that sound a little bit like the names of terrorists and criminals on prohibited lists, but are really hit and miss. And these alerts require an army of analysts to look at them and to close them and very rarely actually uncovered cases of money laundering. I could go into a lot more detail, but for now, I would just say that regulatory technology or reg tech thus far has not been an area that has been effective, at least pre-AI. Today, we have AI on the scene in a big way, and there is the hope that it can step in and improve the performance of compliance functions and technology in the compliance sector. But I think that anyone who has used large language models, LLMs, will now tell you that right now they still cannot deliver the level of analysis and specificity and precision that is required to address the bank's most, press, most pressing compliance challenges. And why is that? It's because LLMs will, quote, scrape the internet and come up with a set of results that are many times unfocused. They usually will also give you too much information and more information than what's needed. Now, if you ask a regulatory question, instead of only directly quoting from the regulation itself, it will act smart and cite a massive amount of information that could be related to your question, but only in passing. So it could quote an article that refers to the regulation, but has nothing to do with actually how to implement the regulation. And that is really what uh, compliance officers are looking for. Then you have to go back and ask it more and more questions until you can get to usable information. So the key word here is focus, i.e. developing a small language model, SLM for compliance, that will contain only the materials that are needed to answer specific compliance questions and deliver meaningful results. And in that way, defining the quote, sources of truth is important to ensure that you're only getting targeted answers. The compliance world now involves not only banks, but law firms, audit firms, funds, and a whole host of different areas that are legally liable for their actions. The good news here is that there are entrepreneurs at work 
that will be developing this type of tool. So watch the space for more information. If these tools are successful, then they will add significant efficiencies to organizations and make the entire financial system more mature and more secure. But probably best of all, it will make the job of the compliance professionals far more interesting, strategic, and worthwhile. If you like this content, please subscribe to the channel and enable notifications to see the next episode. Thank you.